Lalibela, Ethiopia, a mysterious city carved from the bedrock of time itself. This is a place where every corner seems to hold ancient secrets. During my recent expedition here to see the rock-hewn churches, I discovered a legend that a holy relic had been hidden in these mountains of Ethiopia for centuries. I felt compelled to investigate further. The whereabouts of the lost Ark of the Covenant has eluded scholars and archaeologists, kings and world leaders for thousands of years. Many have thought that if they could control it, they could control supernatural powers. Its location is a mystery that has swept the globe, as some say that the Ark of the Covenant was destroyed long ago by an invading army, but others say that it was hidden away and survives to the present day. I had to know if there was a connection between the ancient city of Lalibela and the lost Ark of the Covenant. So my quest began at the monolithic church of St. George. Welcome to Lalibela in the remote northern highlands of Ethiopia. I'm going to be here for the next week or so exploring the world's largest monolithic churches. The Lalibela complex is composed of 11 churches that are interconnected with tunnels. So there is so much to explore here. And legend says that men worked through the day and angels through the night to complete the building of these incredibly unique churches. They also say that the churches were built in only 24 years, which archaeologists have <laughs> determined would be nearly impossible even with with today's technology. So there's a lot to see here. Let's go check it out. These are Ethiopian Orthodox churches and an aspect of Christianity in Ethiopia that has been shrouded in mystery for centuries is the Ark of the Covenant. And that is one reason why I have traveled this far to explore this aspect of history in greater detail. According to the Bible, the Ark of the Covenant carries the two stone tablets with the Ten Commandments, as well as Aaron's rod and a pot of manna. The Ark of the Covenant is described in the book of Exodus as about four and a half feet long, two and a half feet wide, and two and a half feet high. It's a wooden box overlaid with pure gold, topped by a lid of solid gold, decorated by two angels with outstretched wings. It's carried on the shoulders using carrying poles and, according to the Bible, was where God's very presence on earth dwelled. It is just surreal being able to sit here basically completely by myself and soaking in the energy of this place, hearing the sound of the birds and feeling the coolness of the stones. This is a once in a lifetime experience. And actually, so in each church like this one in Ethiopia, there is a replica of the Ark of the Covenant inside of it. And it's actually hidden behind a curtain that only the priest priests or deacons can go behind to see it. And it's actually very interesting because this region of Ethiopia has a very powerful connection to the Ark of the Covenant and their histories began to intertwine hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Part of the tunnels. Whoa, it's pretty wet in here. Whoa. <laughs> I can't believe that they were able to build these kind of tunnels 900 years ago. Oh, this is so crazy. Just exploring between some of the different churches now and we're coming up to another tunnel. You can see we're crossing bridges some construction happening here and we're gonna go down the tunnel. The symbol of, it, the symbol of hell. Whoa. Yeah, just the three green people, they, they came to the other side. Whoa. So, so no problem, we can, keep, we, we can keep it the right side, no flash. Okay. Yeah. How long is this? Just 
I'll tell you when you bend your head. Okay. Yeah. Wow, so we're For me, in an yeah. underground tunnel right now. <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, symbol of heaven. And the next church is heaven. We go to heaven. Really excited to get to heaven. <laughs> yeah, it's so dark, you literally can't see anything in here. Hell's like seven times darker than this. Wow, this is definitely not somewhere that anyone with claustrophobia If we go to the... Want to go. Finally. Whoa, the light at the end of the tunnel. Now we are on the way to heaven. Oh my gosh. That was that was pretty intense. <sighs> so happy to see the light. Now we're crawling up the uh, uh, the stairway uh, to heaven. All of the churches here in Lalibela are carved directly out of the mountain from top to bottom. They were made not using any brick or mortar or cement, wood or anything. And basically, King Lalibela was remodeling nature to create a new Jerusalem so that Ethiopians no longer had to pilgrimage to Jerusalem, which was long and very dangerous, especially during times of conflict. I'm wandering around the tunnels around St. George's Church and I'm lucky enough to have this place completely to myself because it's currently an Ethiopian holiday of Fasika, which is Ethiopian Easter and there's no one around. Wow. This New Jerusalem of King Lalibela that was built in the 12th century sits at the 8,000 foot level across about 62 acres of Ethiopian high country. Each church was made by carving into the soft volcanic tufa rock of the mountain from the top down and then tunneling inside to make the rooms and windows and decorations. From its beginning, Lalibela was one of the holiest places to the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and hundreds of thousands of pilgrims still come here each year as they have been doing for centuries. It is thought by some that King Lalibela built the city as the second home of the Ark of the Covenant when Jerusalem was overtaken taken by the Muslims. Walking around the maze of tunnels connecting these churches does give one a feeling that something sacred might have been protected here. One resounding aspect I find so interesting about the religious culture here is that there's no other place in the world that has a living history of worshiping the Ark of the Covenant in this way. And that insinuates that there must be a deeper connection here. I want to shed some light on the different theories surrounding the fate of the Ark of the Covenant. Some say it was simply destroyed when the Jewish temple was sacked by the Babylonians. Some believe that it is hidden in the tunnels below the Temple Mount in Jerusalem where it remains to this day. Some believe it was hidden in other locations around the Middle East or Europe, while others believe it is here in Ethiopia. One possible reason for so many theories is a lack of documentation that exists for the Ark of the Covenant's own protection, as some people believe that the Ark's re-emergence could bring about the end of the world. We are now heading back to meet with the priest of St. George's Church and hopefully with the help of a translator we'll be able to have some more information about the connection between the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and the Ark of the Covenant. This is Keith Derb. He is the priest who has served at St. George's Church for decades. I was fortunate enough to be able to sit down with him for a half an hour to learn more about the Ark of the Covenant's connection to Lalibela from his perspective. While talking with the priest and my guide, I found two prevailing theories on how the Ark of the Covenant reached Ethiopia. 
One is the traditional Ethiopian legend about how their Queen of Sheba and the Jewish King Solomon had a son, Menelik I, who took the Ark to Aksum. While the historic timeline of events doesn't match up perfectly with this legend, this Solomonic dynasty belief was very important to the Ethiopians for thousands of years. In fact, the last emperor of Ethiopia who was disposed in the 1970s, Haile Selassie, still claimed to be able to trace his lineage back to Solomon himself. Another theory is that the Ark of the Covenant was taken from Solomon's temple in Jerusalem before Solomon's temple was destroyed and hidden for 200 years in a secret Jewish temple on the Nile in Egypt. It supposedly later journeyed further downriver to a source of the Nile, Lake Tana, where it was kept for 800 more years by the Jewish community there, before being brought to Aksum by Ethiopian Christians in the 5th century, where it has not been seen since by the outside world. I was fortunate enough to be in Lalibela at the time of their Ethiopian Orthodox Easter celebrations, which helped me learn more about their beliefs. Tens of thousands of faithful came from the surrounding regions to attend the services in Lalibela, which is the second most sacred place in the country. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church is highly unique in that it is Christian but with strong influences from Judaism, probably due to their tradition of Menelik receiving the Ark of the Covenant from Solomon. Since the city of Aksum, which is further north, is said to house the Ark today in the Saint Mary of Zion Church, that is the most sacred place to the Orthodox. However, at the time of filming, that northern region was still trapped in the midst of an active war between Eritrea and Ethiopia. Sadly, just a few months before my visit, there were reports of an alleged massacre of hundreds of civilians at the Church of St. Mary of Zion. As I stood in the midst of thousands of faithful and listened to their chants reaching to the heavens, I realized that the connection I was searching for between the ancient city of of Lalibela and the lost Ark of the Covenant was all around me and its people. I am actually not here to argue fact or fiction or theory about the fate of the Ark of the Covenant, but I'm more having the intention to discover as much as I can about it while traveling in Ethiopia, and especially since it's such a significant part of the uh, religious culture here. But there are many historians that are quick to dismiss the Ethiopian version of this story due to complete lack of tangible evidence and it's actually that void of evidence that made room for filmmakers like Steven Spielberg to send Indiana Jones on a fictional quest to find the lost Ark of the Covenant without having too many worries about uh, you know misinterpreting existing evidence. Uh, Indiana Jones actually found the Ark of the Covenant in Egypt. <laughs> All right, my conclusion on my quest of truth to the fate of the Ark of the Covenant is that if it does in fact exist in Ethiopia today, it is most likely in St. Mary's Church of Zion in Aksum, which is located in the Tigray region, only a few hours north of here. There is also a very fascinating connection between Ethiopian Christianity and Judaism, which suggests that there was a very strong uh, contact or connection in ancient times between the two regions. So that is a very thought-provoking conclusion because it definitely uh, insinuates that the Ark of the Covenant could in fact exist in Ethiopia today if it was not destroyed. Well, let me know in the comments where else you think that it would be. Thank you so much for coming with me on this journey. It has been so much fun exploring Ethiopia so far. If you want to keep up to date on my daily adventures, check out my Instagram stories. I post a lot of stories, so head on over to Lexi Limitless on Instagram to see some of those. All right, guys, this has been an amazing adventure, and I will catch you next week.